Good morning, folks. We've got good news today. At least I think it's good news. We've got a lot to cover, so let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun was relatively calm compared to the last few weeks, with the exception of the massive coronal hole, which I can now say is as big as the biggest in cycle 24. Its solar wind is on the way. But we're also expecting impact from a small CME. The telemetry shows it's at least a few hours late. This is what I'm thinking is good news. Being slower than expected means it's even weaker than expected. And given that a coronal hole stream is on the way right afterwards for a one-two punch, that's why I'm considering it a good thing. The only way it's bad is if we still get serious geomagnetic effects from the first little pop, confirming the fears about the weakening shield from last week's failed test from the sun. Should arrive sometime today. Super quick note here. Typhoon is land falling set to deliver the worst of its effects after harassing the west coast of India for the last two days. Folks, NASA launched that plasma release experiment last night. Lots of people had clouds. In fact, nearby viewers had to watch the second ignition from beneath the clouds. It apparently went off without any hitches, though. But the images of the effects are very few so far this morning. Just a few green glows from the actual release point. If anyone finds better footage of the night glow, please share it. We've got a double for solar climate forcing up next, starting with a control over the North Atlantic Oscillation. Amazingly, this controls much of the planet's weather, as much as El Nino and La Nina, but it gets less credit in people's minds. And the stronger the solar cycle, the stronger the correlation. And from the decadal scale down to that rapid, near instantaneous forcing of electromagnetic coupling, an excellent review of the atmospheric electricity working by the ebb and flow of the solar wind and the energy of solar flares. If you have our textbook, those two papers hit chapters 4 and 5, and actually a bit of 7 too. Up next, we're getting the latest Taurus jet model of the interior of active galactic nuclei. The dusty Taurus is a key aspect of the interior region, but it's not the only one. A more massive Taurus forms from the jet around the entire system, not unlike how Earth has Van Allen Taurus features, and the Taurus shape of the larger total magnetic field. It is these Taurus features that also force the electric field along the midplane. Nice to see the science progressing today as we've recently hit the galactic version of these quite hard. And speaking of that electric midplane, let's look at the last time our solar system encountered it. A good study for a number of reasons, including their notation of the difference between carbon dating and estimated actual range, one of the reasons dating these past events gets so screwy, but no screwiness on the outcome, major fires and ecosystem disruption, as is found with the last event across the rest of the planet. Now folks, for the last story, we have to start by jumping back in time for some background. While we do mostly focus on the 12,000 year cycle, the shorter ones from the sun are major players too, especially its 3,000 and 6,000 year cycles, the subharmonics of the grand 12,000 year cycle. And now that we're reminded of the 6,000 year half cycle events, Let's see a paper that examines just the Asian monsoon and manages to see every single Heinrich event known for flooding, major ice movement, and climate assault on the environment. Normally, we don't get this, a timeline survey from a single study, but they did it here throughout the entire timeline available to the researchers. And so, instead of the normal 12,000-year cycle chart, let's go back through the last few half-cycle events. As most viewers know, the process has begun once again here on Earth. We see it on Earth, the other planets, and beyond. The last several 6,000-year cycles are well known along with their Heinrich events. In fact, going back all the way to about 50,000 years ago, only that H3 event half-cycle doesn't carry an official name to the magnetic change. We greatly appreciate your support. A reminder for those coming to Observer Ranch on Friday, if you haven't got your material back to us yet, time is short. By the way, the entire ranch is now green. Spring rains have transformed the future home of the Observer's community gatherings. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.